All right, gang, this is the third video of our three-part video series on stop losses, okay? The first video showed you price stops. The second video talked about volatility stops. And in this video, we're going to talk about time stops. So, what are time stops? When do you use stop, time stops? What are they good for? I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Let me answer them for you. Time stops is an interesting concept. And you don't want to ever, ever use time stops when you're trading one position. Time stops are good for clusters, position clusters. Okay, what are position clusters? I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to make sure you guys understand all of this. So let me explain all this to you. Most hedge funds, they don't buy Microsoft, they don't buy Apple, they don't do that. They buy a bunch of stocks, they buy a basket of stocks. Large hedge funds, they don't pick stocks like retail traders do. They don't say, oh, Microsoft is gonna go to 100, I gotta have Microsoft, I gotta have Microsoft. That's not how they do things, okay? That's how retail traders do things. What a hedge fund manager will do is say, based on my, based on my analysis, these three or four stocks are the best picks for the next three weeks or a month. And usually that cluster, that position cluster, will have a built-in hedge. All right. My spelling and my writing just sucks, but that's, it is what it is. So it has a built-in hedge, all right? And that's why I'm repeating everything I'm saying because I can't, I can barely read this stuff. So, and again, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me, roger at wealthpress.com. I'll answer any question you may have, but let me get through this. So position clusters, imagine a fund manager putting together a perfectly mixed cocktail. And the cocktail has uh, one stock in the speculative sector, one stock in the defensive sector, maybe a bond, which will hedge your portfolio, or even a short position. So a cluster has multiple positions. The reason why time stops don't work with single positions is because you're putting too much exposure on the line and not giving yourself any risk, right? What if something happens to that one position? You're gonna be SOL, right? We don't want that, okay? Nobody wants that. So a time stop gives you an, a built-in hedge so you don't have to have a fixed stop loss following your position around. Now, why are time stops effective? Let me give you a good reason why. Stocks are choppy 70% of the time. The stock market is a counter trend market. It's choppy 70% of the time. That means it's only trending 30% of the time. And when stocks are choppy and when stocks are not trending, you tend to get a lot of false stops. Because what does the stock market do? It does this, it goes sideways. And one wrong move and you get stopped out and then the stock moves back up. We've seen that happen all the time. So what a time stop does, it prevents you from getting stopped out prematurely. But again, you have to create a time stop only when you have multiple positions. It's not a good idea for single positions. So the, the benefit, the biggest benefit of a time stop is it allows you to get a little breathing room in the market and avoid getting stopped out. Because getting stopped out puts you out of business. And this can keep you in business. And what I found with time stops is our accuracy is between 70 and 75%, even when we're trading breakouts. And most of you know, if you don't know, the, break, the accuracy for breakouts is about 30 to 40%. Um, if you can get anything above 55% with a breakout, you're doing well. We find that we're in a 70 to 75 accuracy range over several years using breakouts and time stops. So there's a big, big benefit to using time stops and you start trading like a real hedge fund manager. The only issue, the only issue is you can't apply it to single position. You have to use clusters. You've got to use trade clusters. My ideal trade cluster is three stocks and one long bond like a TMF or a TLT position to hedge against downside risk. So again, there's three types of stops. There's a price stop, a volatility stop, and a time stop. 
The price stop you want to use when you're short-term trading, very, very little upside, very quick protective, very little breathing room, very reactive behavior in the market. When you're using volatility stops, you're now gauging the actual activity of the market. You're looking to see what the market actually did. You're going to cause yourself to have a little bigger drawdown, but you're going to get stopped out a lot less. And then you have time stops and you use time stops when you have position clusters because if you use them when you don't have position clusters, you're putting yourself at risk because you're putting yourself in the jeopardy. You have one position, no stop loss. If that position goes down, you're done. But when you're talking about three or four positions, the odds are not all of them are going to get bad news or bad earnings and so forth. So you want to use time stops with clusters. And I hope you enjoyed this three video, three part video series. If you have any questions, please reach out roger at wealthpress.com and don't forget to follow this YouTube page. I'll talk to you soon.